Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today, we're going to talk about the Antman API again, but we're going to look at how to integrate Antman and its API into your custom workflow. So to begin with, I'm still working on my Ants on Nano here that I created last time um, with my three Antlets and basically nothing else. No snapshots, no virtual drives, nothing fancy in virtual network, just a basic setup of three Antlets as you might have it in your own Ansel. Last time we also looked at the Swagger documentation, which is basically an entire workspace for you to work with the admin API. It's not just a documentation, but you can actually perform live API requests inside your browser. So if you don't know what this is, or if you haven't seen that before, definitely go back and look at the first video because it'll make a lot more sense once you've seen it. So what we want to achieve today is create a script which will uh, call a specific admin endpoint. For our case, in this example, we chose the snapshots endpoint, and it'll create snapshots for each antlet that we currently have running on uh, the Nano. And we can then use that script to, for example, hook it up to a cron job and say, okay, let's create a new snapshot for each antlet every five minutes, every hour, whatever time we see fit. To do that, I've created a script which is written in Python and it's actually super simple. So this is the script, what it looks like. It might be a bit overwhelming at first, so let's look at the actual endpoint and start with the API part first. So to start off, we look at the snapshot section and we look at the post request for API antlets and then the antlet name. As you can see right here, that request takes several parameters. For one, we need the antlet name. So that of course needs to be a valid antlet that we have running on the actual machine that we're calling that endpoint to. So then the second parameter is actually an object and this will take all the parameters that we need for our snapshot. Actually, these are all the parameters available for the snapshot, but the only thing we need to supply is the snapshot name. So I could easily do that via the admin API simply by going into GitLab, into the snapshot section, and then say new snapshot. All it's asking me for is the snapshot name. So for example, if I say, I don't know, my new snapshot and click on create new snapshot, it'll automatically save the exact machine state to disk. Now let's look at how to automate this. So for that, we would need our antlet name and the antlet snapshot as we said before. To dynamically fetch all values or that we need here, it might be best to also look at the antlets endpoint. So to create a snapshot for each antlet, we actually need to know what antlets are currently running on the machine. And for that, we'll be utilizing the get request to actually fetch all the antlets. So let's take a look back at our script here, and we can see that we need a few uh, variables first. So the first one we need is obviously the address. This can be your local address, so that would be your Ansel name, not local, or the actual IP address of your server. Then we need the token. We'll go back and cover how to get the token in a minute. And then we actually need to supply the snapshot name. So the name that I just entered in the browser um, to name the snapshot for all virtual machines. Then what's happening is, we're fetching all antlets that are available on the server using the slash API slash antlets endpoint. That would be this one here. Doing so will give us an array of antlet objects. We need to filter them to only get the names because we will need the names for actually creating the snapshot later. Then I've defined a function to actually create the snapshot, which is basically a very simple thing. We're looping through all the antlets in the returned antlets that we got from the first uh, function here. And for each antlet, we will be calling the API antlets snapshot um, endpoint to actually create the snapshot for each, um, for each antlet. So once we've defined those two functions, all we need to do is to actually call the function, store the value returned in our antlets variable, and then create the snapshots. You can see here that I have another line, which is actually super handy because that allows me to filter antlets. For example, if you have some sort of database service running inside the antlet, it might be a good idea to stop the antlet first. Since the database is always writing to disk, you might end up taking a snapshot in a corrupt state. So for that, we can actually say, okay, only create snapshots for the antlets that are currently in the state stopped. You could also automate this and say, okay, for example, every once a day, you can shut down all your antlets, take the snapshot, and then power them back on, all using the admin API. 
But for now, let's keep it simple. Let's just walk through. And last but not least, we're actually calling the create snapshots functions uh, function with the antlets that we got from fetch antlets. Again, if we wanted to create snapshots only for the filtered antlets, I would simply go ahead, copy this, and replace it. Okay, let's look at the variables again. The token will be required for each request that you make. It basically identifies you and lets Antman know that you're authorized to actually make requests. The way you obtain it is by using the API. So for that, we have an authentication section up here and an API login endpoint. We covered this last time, but let's briefly do it again. So you need to send your username and password to the Antman API and it'll return the parameter or the JSON, uh, JSON web token for you to authenticate with. The username in my instance is still root and the password is simply Ansel. So once I click try it out, it'll actually perform the request inside my browser and it'll return the token that I have right here. Now I can use that token to authenticate in my script, basically replace that with token and then paste it in and we can use or define the snapshot name. For now, it's fine if we just keep it at snapshot. You could also make that dynamic and for example, fetch the current time um, so that later when you actually run that script in a cron job, it'll have a different snapshot name for each time you run the um, snapshot or create snapshot command. Since that's fine for now, let's take a look at the actual environment. I'll be running this script from the command line of my Ansel. So I'm going to switch back to a terminal here where I already have that script hopefully pre-filled with all the information required. Let's look at that script real quick again and make sure I actually have my token in there to authenticate with. And there we go. So the address is going to be localhost 3000 since it's going to be running on the actual Ansel itself. And the token is actually just my JWT that I pasted in here. For snapshot name, since this is a test, we're simply going to call it testing. So let's exit here and actually try running the script and see what happens. As you can see here, it now looped through all of my antlets that I have. So that would be GitLab, the email service, and WordPress, and created snapshots. I can see that the API returned the status code 201, which means that the snapshot was successfully created. So what I could do here is now simply automate this using a cron tab. Again, I can't automate the script just yet. If I wanted to do so, I would need to find some dynamic way, uh, way of actually defining the snapshot name. Since when the snapshot, once the snapshot testing exists, you cannot create a second snapshot with the same name. So that would be um, required to change if we actually wanted to automate it. However, for the sake of simplicity, let's just say we have actually a dynamic way to create a snapshot name, and let's just look at how we would do that. First, we can utilize a software that's called CronTab, or just a cron job, which is automatically pre-configured and pre-installed on your Ansel itself. And to do so, you can simply type crontab-e for edit, and then type in the command that we used to invoke the script right here. So there are a few things to actually um, watch out for. So first of all, we want to make sure that we all have a right interval in which that script should be called. For that, I like to use a website that's called crontab.guru. So this website allows you to super easily um, get the right syntax for your actual cron job. So in that case, let's just say uh, we would like to run that every 10 minutes, right? So I could say, okay, let's run that every 10 minutes and that looks right. I think it does. Should. Okay, maybe not. Oh, sorry, now I need to place it in reverse. Yeah, that makes more sense. All right, that's what I'm looking for. So that syntax basically now tells me or tells the cron job that it should be run at every 10th minute. That does not necessarily mean 
um, that when you configure it at, for example, 10.05, that it's going to run at 10.015 the next time. So you actually need to watch out for that. It's really, as you can see up here, it's going to run at every 10th minute, starting with a full hour. So for example, 10 o'clock, 10.010, .10, and so on and so forth. So let's just copy that out right here. So go back into our cron tab and just paste it in. But we actually need to insert first. Then paste it in and simply type our command. So to make sure that the cron tab doesn't get confused, I'm actually using the full path to my create snapshot. Um, script here. We're going to have that script uh, linking in the video description so you can just try it out yourself and if you wanted to you could also place that in some other uh, path for example user local bin or something whatever works best for you. In my case it's just in the root directory so I'm going to say okay call it here in root create snapshot. Once that's done it's just telling me that it installed a new cron tab and now I can actually go back in 10 minutes and make sure that the script actually ran. That's pretty much it. Next time we're going to cover how to use the Entman API with Terraform. We're going to build infrastructure as code and then run it using our own Terraform provider and deploy Antlets on our Ansel Nano here. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, put them in the video description below and we'll be happy to look at them. Until next time.